Welcome to my second video tutorial on how to use the GPS mod version 3.2.1. In this video I will be explaining how to use all of the features that the GPS mod is capable of, excluding those covered in the first part of this tutorial. I'm going to assume that you've already seen the first video and you know and understand all of the features covered there. In this video we'll be, we will be using a host of different vehicles and implements and I will also be showing you some tips and tricks to get the most out of the GPS mod and to make it easier to use. First, we're going to explain what an offset is, why you may need an offset, and how to use it. An offset is used when your vehicle cannot follow the center of a course. There are many reasons why you may need an offset, but one of the best examples is when pulling a plow. Since the tractor does not pull this plow by the center of its width, the tractor cannot follow the green line and will instead follow the offset, which is defined by a dotted blue line on the ground. Let's start by turning the GPS on and opening up our big HUD, and we'll go over some of the configurations pertaining to the offset. When you use the auto set feature to set your width for an implement, if it requires an offset it will also automatically determine it. The offset value will also display here on the small HUD, and the number represents how far from the center of the course the offset is. Because we're using a rollover plow, we need to flip the offset to the opposite side of the course every time we turn around. This can be done automatically by clicking the invert offset button here. The plus and minus buttons under the offset section of the big HUD can be used to manually create and adjust your offset. This button can be used to remove your offset altogether. Some implements will always require an offset, like our plow here, but later in the video I'll show you some other ways we can make use of offsets. Now I'll get the course aligned with the edge of the field and demonstrate how the tractor follows the offset. Again, because I'm going to roll the plow over at the headland, I have the offset set to automatically invert every time I turn around. This is also indicated by this symbol here on the small HUD, and watch how the offset will flip from the right side to the left side of the course when I turn around. You can set up your GPS to automatically stop the vehicle once you reach the end of the field. This is useful if you need to leave your vehicle unattended for a moment, and you don't want the vehicle to drive out of the field, and you're too impatient to stop the vehicle altogether. The auto stop function can be turned on by clicking this button. Currently as displayed on the small HUD here, the GPS is not set to perform any auto stop or auto turn functions. When activated, this symbol will appear on the small HUD. You can also set the exact distance from the edge of the field that the vehicle will stop. The stop distance is displayed on the small HUD here and can be increased or decreased by using these buttons here. Let's configure the auto stop to stop when the vehicle reaches, say, 7.6 meters from the edge of the field, and watch as the vehicle comes to a stop on its own.
Clicking this button again will enable auto turn. This is a very useful tool which will automatically turn your vehicle around at the headland and into the next desired pass. When auto turn is enabled, this symbol will appear on the small HUD. The upper arrow indicates whether the vehicle is going to turn to the left or to the right during its next turn. To switch this, simply click the turn left or turn right buttons here into the desired direction. For example, in this situation, since I'm going to want to turn to the right, I'll make sure I have it set to turn to the right here. In part one of this tutorial, I taught you to deactivate the GPS so you can turn around manually. When using auto turn, you must leave the GPS activated. The stop distance is also used when using auto turn, as it will determine at what point from the field's edge the vehicle will begin its turn. This usually takes some playing around with to get set up properly. I typically start by setting the stop distance equal to the course width and adjust it as needed. It will vary depending on the tractor and its turn radius, as well as the implement. I have it set up now, so watch as the vehicle turns around automatically without my input. Also note that when the auto turn is activated, the distance counter in the bottom right will indicate in meters how far you are from the turnaround point as opposed to the edge of the field. You can also configure the auto turn to skip passes. This can be very useful in certain multiplayer situations or with smaller implements. If I want the auto turn to skip every other pass, just click the plus and minus buttons here to increase or decrease the number of skip passes. The current skip passes value is displayed on the small HUD here. You can even skip two or three passes simply by increasing it further. If the skip passes is set to zero, the auto turn will turn the vehicle into the next pass. So let's set the skip passes to one and watch as the vehicle automatically turns around without my input and skips a pass. Also note that the auto turn function will automatically invert the turning direction every time it turns around. Finally, just note that clicking this button a third time will deactivate all auto stop and auto turn functions. You can adjust your course in a number of ways by using the buttons in the course set section of the larger HUD. You can bump the course to the left or to the right by using these two buttons. This can be very useful when aligning your first course to the edge of the field. You can rotate your course 90 degrees by clicking this button. And you can rotate your course to any angle by using these buttons here. Clicking the new button under the basic section will reset all course set configurations. Now that we've gone over every feature of the GPS mod, I'll show you some tips and tricks that I personally utilize on a regular basis. First of all, it's important to note that the GPS mod cannot recognize field boundaries in a grass field. Therefore, you cannot use the auto stop or auto turn functions, and you'll notice that the counter in the bottom right corner of the small HUD will remain blank. In part one of this tutorial, I taught you to set your width first. I also mentioned that for drawn implements, the implement must be unfolded and aligned perfectly with the tractor. 
As you can see, when I don't have my implement perfectly aligned with the tractor and I turn my GPS on and set my width, it's not going to set properly. Oftentimes you'll get an offset and obviously for an implement like this, we should not have an offset. The easiest way to set your width properly is get started in the field and set your width after you get going. Normally what I do is align the vehicle where it needs to be, set a new course and then I'll set the width once I get going. So I'll start by aligning my cultivator with the edge of the field. Turn my GPS on. Press left control numpad enter to set my course to where my tractor currently is. Lower the cultivator, activate the GPS and get going. Obviously because the GPS steers the tractor perfectly straight, once you get going, you'll know that the implement is perfectly aligned with the tractor. Then you can automatically set your width. In part 1, I also showed you how to use the load save feature. Not only is this handy for having more than one vehicle in the same field, it can be very useful for jobs such as baling or silage where the baler or another vehicle will follow the windrows. Let me show you a good example using these vehicles. First of all, once I've configured my GPS for my mower, I'll save my settings to slot number 26, since that's the field number that I'm working in. Then, when I pull into the field with the chopper, I can load the same settings and all of my passes will align with the windrows. Furthermore, even carting silage can be made easier by using some of these features. First I'll load the GPS settings from slot 26. But because I do not want the tractor to follow the center of the course, I need to manually create an offset. An offset of about 5 meters will work. Since I want to alternate which side of the chopper I drive on every time I turn around, I use the automatically invert offset button. Now my GPS can be set to run alongside the harvester. The same idea can be used when running grain buggy or chaser bin, but since the harvester always unloads on the left, you wouldn't be able to utilize the automatically invert offset feature. We've now covered every feature of the GPS mod. I highly recommend you try each feature individually with a variety of vehicles and implements. With practice, you'll become an expert at caring for your fields with exceptional professionalism and efficiency. Thank you for watching.